Thank you very much, President Karzai. You paint a picture of hope and optimism. But some would say that hope and optimism is against all odds. And it is my job this morning to ask you about some of the challenges before Afghanistan, challenges that could impact, as I said earlier, uh, not just the entire region, but India in particular. I'd like to remind our audience this morning of something you said in 2006. This is many years ago, and you were asked, where is Osama bin Laden? Afghanistan was accused at that time of bin Laden being somewhere in your country. And you turned around and said, bin Laden is in Pakistan, but my friend, the then President Parvez Musharraf, will get mad at me for saying so. When bin Laden was finally taken out in Aptabad in Pakistan, do you believe it vindicated your stand that the American war on terror, instead of being strikes on Afghanistan, should have been strikes on Pakistan? Can I go back there? I sure. Think I'm standing there. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mr. Thank you very much for the question and thank you for allowing me to speak. Uh, I proved right. Uh, I guess he was uh, killed in Abbottabad. So I proved right. And I also proved right because uh, Afghanistan was not where the United States and its allies should have fought terrorism or extremism. They should have gone to the sanctuaries. They should have removed the sanctuaries. They should have removed the sources and financing to this menace and also the ideological uh, trainers of it. Therefore, uh, I believe I can say with confidence that I proved to be right. So are you suggesting that the raids that took place on, on Afghanistan, the airstrikes by the United States of America and Britain, should have instead been directed at Pakistan? I don't say that, that the United States should have conducted air raids uh, uh, in Pakistan, no. I don't want any raid, air raids, any bombardment anywhere. I don't want it in Afghanistan, I don't want it in Pakistan. And for that matter, I don't want it anywhere else in the world. Uh, the question of terrorism could have been addressed in a different way, in a more political way, by removing the, the sources of support, the motivational factors for terrorism, the training grounds of terrorism. The world, the United States and the rest of the world should have dried out the environment in which they were grown and fed, not by waging a war, not by bombardments. I would never wish uh, even a pen to drop on Pakistani soil from air, no. But you have been very blunt, uh, President Karzai, that the terror havens exist in Pakistan, that the trouble in your country is, in a sense, being exported from the other side of the border, something we in India face all the time uh, as well. I want you to comment on former President Parvez Musharraf's statement this week, where he said that not just is Afghanistan heading for a proxy war between India and Pakistan, but that Pakistan would use the Pashtun people of Afghanistan to work against India. <coughs> I have already remarked about that the day before yesterday in the Delhi policy group meeting. Uh, this was um, a very uh, unfortunate remark by the honorable former president of Pakistan. Uh, first of all, uh, there will not be a proxy war between India and Pakistan and Afghanistan. And then Afghanistan will not allow such a war to take place on our soil. That's exactly uh, uh, the cause of our suffering. There was a proxy war between America and Russia in Afghanistan, the Soviet Union, uh, that led to all of that misery in Afghanistan. So we will not allow that. And I'm sure also that India will not do that. India will be there to educate our children, to bring us uh, transmission lines and build dams for us, not to wage a proxy war um, in Afghanistan against Pakistan. So I would like to give a reassurance today to President Musharraf that he need not worry <laughs> of that, that uh, uh, we, will, we, will be, we will be safe and sound and uh, uh, Afghanistan is wise and so is India a very wise and ancient civilization. But how do you read the... Ma'am. Sorry, go ahead. On the question of uh, Pakistan using the Pashtuns against India, well, that was, as I mentioned earlier, a very insulting remark to the Pashtuns living across the Duran line uh, in Pakistan. Uh, if uh, President Musharraf 
considers uh, the Pashtuns across the Duran line in Pakistan to be citizens of Pakistan, then he should respect them and consider them as their own people. And you don't use your own people in a proxy war against another nation. So that speaks a lot of the intentions there and of the mindset. But again, I would advise that we uh, go beyond using uh, nations or ethnic groups uh, as uh, tools in war. Rather, we should begin to respect them and help them and educate them. Afghanistan will certainly be of all help and assistance to Pakistan to provide better education to the Pashtuns in Pakistan and to uphold their right as human beings that deserve a lot of dignity rather than attacks on them. But President Karzai, how do you read Pervez Musharraf's very provocative remarks? And he's known for them here in India as well. Do you believe he's just a lone ranger who's out of power and, and in a sense talking only for himself? Or do you believe his comments actually give us a glimpse into the approach of the Pakistan security establishment? Probably the second part is true. Uh, but I can't, cannot speculate. Therefore, my, uh, my views will be that uh, let's take uh, uh, the, 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 the side of uh, the benefit of the doubt. Let's say that he did it on his own, that it is not the views of the state of Pakistan. Whatever the case may be, we have to be watchful and we have to prevent this from happening. Now, just as India's new government was being sworn in, we saw an attack on the Indian consulate in Herat. And you were very blunt then, and you basically implied that these were terror groups from Pakistan, the lashkar e taiba was suspected. Why do you believe that Pakistan encouraged this attack to happen when even the Pakistani Prime Minister had been invited to the swearing-in? We didn't say that this was Pakistan. We didn't say. We were given a report by um, uh, the intelligence of a very, very, very strong country that is present in Afghanistan, uh, putting it in clear words that the attack came from across the border. So it was not our word, it was the word and the report of a strong intelligence agency. As president, you made, I think, more than 20 trips to Pakistan. You continue to make the argument that they were fomenting terror in your country. What was the response of leaders like Parvez Musharraf or other Pakistani leaders when you would raise the issue of terrorism? And how much pressure was there on you to basically damage your ties with India? Well, <coughs> ma'am, Pakistan is a neighbor of Afghanistan, just like it is a neighbor of India. And it's a very close neighbor of Afghanistan. We have tremendous uh, connectivity, people-to-people -people relations. We are almost like twins when it comes to uh, the shared values and, 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 um, and, and shared population. I went to Pakistan 20 times with a great desire to imp improve relations, not only to improve relations, but to have the best of possible relations between the two countries. We need that relationship, and I would still and continue to work for it Unfortunately, uh, I did not succeed. I hope my successor, President Ghani, uh, would succeed in this, and we should give him all our helping hand. Yes, uh, unfortunately, Pakistan did want uh, us to compromise on our independence uh, of foreign policy and some other issues. That was not impossible for us, so uh, we will engage with Pakistan as a sovereign independent state of Afghanistan, conducting its own foreign policy and recognizing what is considered to be ours and our rights. That will not be compromised, no matter what. Do you believe the Haqqani network in Afghanistan gets support from Pakistan? <clears throat> you must have heard the remark of uh, Admiral Mullen, the former U.S. Uh, uh, Army Chief, I believe, the Chief of Staff uh, of the U.S. Forces, who said the Haqqani network is the veritable or the unveritable arm of the ISI. Now, the United States is very well informed uh, on all these issues. Uh, so if the U.S. speaks, I'm sure you don't need remarks from an Afghan. That's, that's a smart way of giving the answer by putting it on the Americans, right? I've learned to do that. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the Americans. 
would you say you have a love hate relationship with the americans or is it all hate hate today no 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 i i don't hate anybody uh i've been in india for 6 years and i'm uh, tremendously affected by gandhi ji's uh, um, uh, views and and values and ethos therefore no hate at all i stood up against the united states because i wanted them to correct aspects of their behavior in afghanistan that i referred to in my written remarks i wanted them not to bomb our, our villages i wanted them not to put our people in prison in the name of the war on terror because it wasn't there as i said and i wanted them to help the afghan people rather than to hurt the afghan people we are grateful for where the american people have provided us assistance in our, in our education in our institution building in road building in lots of other areas but also as a human being as a citizen and as the president of afghanistan it was my job to protect the afghan people to speak for them when there was the need so that's what i did i would, i would love to be friends with america the afghan people would love to be friends with america but friends uh, as two equal people one very poor the other very rich but that doesn't reduce the dignity that we should have but you have spoken president of about the dualism in american policy vis-a-vis -vis pakistan i think you once said it's like asking us to find the thief but leaving the house open for the thief to get in uh, basically your argument correct me if i'm wrong has been that while the americans made all the right noises about terror havens in pakistan because of the utilitarian relationship with islamabad they didn't do much about it uh this is a persian uh, proverb uh Uh, allowing the thief to steal and asking the owner of the house to be watchful but there is an english uh, one as well uh, running with the hare and hunting with the hound uh, that's what i believe they did and that's what they should not be doing and did you raise that with the americans oh yes i have told president obama exactly this proverb and what did in one say? of uh, our video conferences what did he say silence silence He said nothing at all. I don't think so. I, I guess we went to other subjects. Talk a little bit about India now. Mm -hmm. You met with Prime Minister Modi yesterday. Did you take away a sense that India is prepared to be more involved, even more involved in Afghanistan than it has been? <sighs> India and Afghanistan have thousands of years of history together. is basically the same civilization the same cultural entity uh when uh, we followed the uh, european models of uh, nation states with borders and limitations of movement uh, then we conducted uh, a state to state relationship that too very very friendly and of satisfaction to afghanistan there was a period of break up uh in this relationship from the soviet invasion of afghanistan to 2001 where afghanistan was incapacitated and not able to conduct its own relations and choose its friends as soon as in 2001 we were liberated from that uh, condition afghanistan's first priority was to engage with neighbors and the closest neighbor here in this regard traditionally historically is india india responded very well by providing us scholarships as many scholarships i as i asked for as the afghan people asked for india provided and the help that i outlined earlier so this has been a very satisfactory relationship a relationship that we cherish and value and a relationship that the afghan people would take further into depths but let me play devil's advocate here president karzai do you believe india has missed its opportunity to have a leadership role in the region in particular in afghanistan do you believe india should have been quicker with providing military aid and assistance there have even been suggestions never accepted by any indian indian government to have put indian boots on the ground no we don't need indian boots on the ground in afghanistan <clears throat> as a matter of fact we don't need any boots uh, from outside on afghanistan i hope nato in the united states will soon also be leaving afghanistan <clears throat> as far as their boots are concerned uh <clears throat> what we need india to do more is to engage in bringing stronger capacity to the afghan forces 
to the Afghan military, to the Afghan police. India is well situated to train our, our, our officers, to train our, our, our um, civil services. And India is also industrially, in terms of uh, uh, production of uh, military equipment, well placed to fulfill Afghanistan's need. And India has now the ability to do that. This has been an Afghan desire, rather an Afghan demand, and I've placed it before the government of India repeatedly. Uh, they did come forward with some assistance, but then India, as um, any old civilization would be, is quite a cautious country. Mm -hmm. and that, I hope, will, over time, give rise to a more proactive policy. Is that a polite way of saying we missed an opportunity? Well, definition is up to you, but uh, uh, I believe there is more that can be done. Did the Americans resist military aid from India? Did they want to control the area of influence? Did they not want Pakistan to get upset? Was that one of the reasons you believe that the issue of military cooperation between Afghanistan and India could not proceed at the pace that you would have liked it to? Well, this has been uh, taking the issue uh, into broader relations. And when you go to a broader relationship uh, where world powers are involved and interests are involved, definitely there will be a lot of overlapping and preventive uh, uh, blocks of, of, of uh, impediments. That did happen, but we could have uh, done uh, past it, and I'm sure we will do past it as we move forward. So the Americans did resist? I answered you. You didn't say yes. Well, uh, look, I'm a former president. And today I have a lot more freedom of expression to speak than I ever had before during my presidency. But I still am not so free to do everything or <laughs> say everything that I want to say. Well, we read between the lines, so that was, that was an indication enough. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> President Karzai, before I open this up for the audience, you have controversially called the Taliban your brothers. Yes. You have drawn a distinction between the foreign jihadists the Arabs, as it were, who have operated in Afghanistan, and the Taliban, who are, of course, Afghan people. But do you really believe that when you call the Taliban your brothers, you are actually encouraging or endorsing a kind of orthodoxy, a kind of social conservatism that has, as we know, taken away the rights in particular of women, that has a very primal approach to justice. So when you call the Taliban your brothers, how do you justify the Taliban's ideology and beliefs? Well, brothers can have different beliefs. Uh, I have my brothers who are, who are in my family who are staunch capitalists, and I'm against that. Uh, uh, so brothers, uh, yes, because they are Afghans, because they are citizens of Afghanistan, because they are from our soil. But brothers also, and this is a very important question, but brothers, also because what drives violence in Afghanistan, what drives uh, intimidation of the Afghan people in Afghanistan, is not sourced from inside our country. It comes from outside. It's outside driven. It's an external policy, uh, terrorism as a tool, as I mentioned. Therefore, when you take that into account, the Taliban, the Afghan Taliban, ladies and gentlemen, the Afghan Taliban are are victims, in a way, of a foreign-generated um, uh, movement, uh, extremist in its, in its views, terroristic in its activities, uh, and, use in, and is used as, a, as an instrument of foreign policy. It was this uh, bifurcation that I tried. It was this separation of an internal situation for, from an external driven terroristic activity that I define the Taliban, the Afghan Taliban, as brothers because they belong to our side, and also to take them away from such influences and to bring them back to Afghanistan and to free them from that exploitation. A final question. You rode in on a motorcycle from Pakistan into Afghanistan in 2001. You almost died then. There have been other assassination attempts on your life. Do you worry for your life? No, I have, as a matter of fact, never worried about my life. Uh, I'm 
you're still here. And we hope you'll be here for a very, very long time. Thank you so much, President Karzai. We have, we have about 10 minutes for questions. I'm seeing a lot of hands uh, go up already. And I will uh, start here in the front row with uh, Mr. Jay Panda, please. President Karzai, uh, among your many significant contributions, I think one of the most important is that your succession could take place democratically. But despite this newfound uh, self-sufficiency in Afghanistan, your country has always been subject to outside interference in many versions of the so-called great game, yes. whether it was Britain or Russia, America, <coughs> anybody. Yes. Uh, how much of a risk do you see that there is still new versions of the great game afoot that endanger Afghanistan with new world powers taking an interest? Mm -hmm. And how significant is it that your successor's first international visit was to China? Well, sir, if you, if you, I'm sure you've read it, uh, a book by uh, uh, a late Indian writer, Narendra Singh Sarela, uh, The Partition in the Context of the Great Game. There he describes how the Great Game began in the 1930s as uh, uh, Britain began to see India getting independent and the way they connected with America to uh, safeguard against uh, a, an anti-colonial, independent, socialist-leaning India from getting together in cooperation with Russia and China. Uh, I believe uh, a new version of that is, and I firmly believe in it, uh, uh, based on my own experience and evidence that I have of my working uh, with world leaders, that that game is on. Uh, and in that game, we in this region have to be very tactful and careful. That is why uh, the need for Afghanistan, uh, Pakistan, and India uh, not to compete but to be friends and to get past this, this um, difficult stage. Uh, now, uh, so yes, there is that great game, but in that great game, neither Russia nor China nor India should be regional competition, should be competitors in the region. But rather, it is highly the time, overdue, that the three big countries of this region, superpowers in their own ways around the world, should recognize the dangers and join hands to first free this region from extremism and terrorism, and then move beyond into a cooperative, open border sort of uh, environment. The great game, if there is any, which I believe there is, is then uh, between uh, uh, the Western powers with their economic um, uh, uh, difficulties and an old civilization in Asia rising in the form of India and China. Inevitably, big powers compete. So that's true, but we have to be careful and avoid negative competition, especially where we are concerned in this region. As for the trip of our president to China, yeah, China, like India, is a neighbor of Afghanistan, and it has been a very considerate neighbor of Afghanistan. I worked very hard uh, to let you know, sir, with China in the past 13 years. I've had seven or eight visits to China. I've tried very hard to bring Chinese um, involvement in Afghanistan, especially after China began to suffer in Xinjiang um, at the hands of terrorism, and this they recognized. So uh, the visit to China is not to um, uh, give lesser importance to India or to America, but it happened because the Heart of Asia Conference happened to be there at that time. The Heart of Asia Conference was originally designed to be in China in September. But in, September, in August, but in, in August we did not finish our elections and, and the, the teams did not get together to form the unity government. So the Chinese postponed it to October. Uh, I told them to postpone it because I did not want to go to that conference as a president uh, on the threshold of the exit door. Uh, I told them to wait for the next president and the next government. So they uh, were kind to postpone it to October. Uh, the visit was for that conference. But of course, then the Chinese were kind. Um, enough to um, uh, give
give him a state visit and give him all the respect that the Afghan president deserves. Um, president Ghani will be soon in India, and I'm sure India will outsmart all other neighbors. <laughs> uh, question here at the second table, please, if you can get a mic there. Please keep your questions short so I can get a few more in. Did you find any difference in, uh, between George Bush and President Obama as far as the foreign policy was concerned towards Afghanistan? A small compliment, you know, probably future generations will realize that what Mahatma Gandhi did for our country, you have in a way done for Afghanistan. Thank you. I'm too, too small to, to be compared there. Uh, uh, sir, uh, your last remark impacted me so strongly that I forgot your first question. What was the difference? Was there any difference between Bush President Obama. Bush and Obama? Bush yes. and Obama. <laughs> Bush and Obama. In terms of foreign policy, states don't make difference with presidents coming and going, unless there is a massive uh, change around the environment. So, no, there is no change uh, in, in foreign policy uh, of the two countries. The pursuit is the same. What the United States perceives to be its national interest, they will do, uh, and continuity is there. You must have heard of deep states. Uh, all states have deep states. Even Afghanistan is a deep state, uh, a continuity of thinking, of, 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 of uh, future. So that will not change with presidents coming and going. Uh, don't believe the New York Times when they say, this administration will be different than the previous one. No, uh, styles will differ, but the core values and interests remain the same, as it is in India. Question there at the, at the back, yes, in the blue shirt, please. Excellency, the uh, latest agreement between Afghanistan and Pakistan indirectly admits that uh, the, the Pakistani Taliban were somewhere in Afghanistan, which President Ghani has said that he will not allow those sanctuaries. Any observation on that? The Pakistani Taliban. Sanctuaries uh, in Afghanistan. Were you referring, sir, to the Taliban sanctuaries in yes, Afghanistan? He was. he was. We... I've had almost in all of my meetings in the past five years a conversation with Pakistani government leaders, my brothers there, from Prime Minister Gailani, President Zardari, to um, uh, 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 Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, uh, who is an honorable friend uh, of mine and, and someone who really wants to improve relations with India, at least. Now, uh, the Taliban sanctuary in Afghanistan is not there. The border areas, the Duran line, is violated for the past 30 years. And an environment is created where the fog of war and terroristic activity has blurred the movement of terrorist groups. What's happening in Afghanistan today is the consequence of this growth of terrorism and the use of it for years across the Duran line, unfortunately. And what's happening in reverse towards Pakistan is the consequence of the same thing. Afghanistan neither has the ability to create a sanctuary nor the will to do that. If there is anything there that hurts Pakistan, which we don't want to happen, it is the direct consequence of what has been happening, unfortunately, in Pakistan for the last 30 years. It has boomeranged, as I said earlier. And I hope that brings us a recognition to change. Time for a last question. There at the back, please. Yes, sir. Uh, I've got the mic. <laughs> uh, 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 Mr. Karzai, First of all, thank you very much for reaffirming your support and confidence for India. Uh, may I press you on the question of China? Please. Uh, I 
understand and you can correct me that the Chinese have initiated a peace and reconciliation process with the Afghan Taliban mm -hmm. at the behest of your successor. Mm -hmm. But that proposal was shot down by the Russians. Now, in what capacity did the Russians shoot down this proposal? That's my first question and a very short question. That there are two deadlines in Afghanistan in 2016. Some people call this uh, a window, but I think these are deadlines. The first is the uh, legitimization of the national unity government mm -hmm. of what some people call this artificial arrangement. Mm -hmm. uh, and the second is, I think, more important, is that all troops are to withdraw by 2016. Mm -hmm. There will be no boots on the ground after 2016. Yet, the PSA that you refuse to sign and your successor and Abdullah, Abdullah CEO have signed, mm -hmm. says that foreign troops can remain in bases, nominated bases, till 2024 and beyond. Yes. Is there a deviation or a contradiction in this? Thank you, sir. Very right. Yeah. Well, the, the first question uh, is very important, the question of China. Um, uh, trying to um, uh, help with the peace process in Afghanistan. Uh, this uh, is, is a long story, sir, and an old story. It was during my presidency that China was approached to uh, help the peace process in Afghanistan because also China, fortunately, at the same time, has good relations with Pakistan. And in view of that good relations, uh, with Pakistan and Afghanistan's uh, uh, friendship uh, with China, uh, I approached the Chinese government, uh, their, their, their president, to help Afghanistan with the peace process where they can help. So it was based on an Afghan request which came during my government um, uh, uh, to, to our neighbor in China to help with the peace process. And they've been working hard on this. What happened uh, during the Heart of Asia conference was not the launch of the peace process, but a, uh, in the declaration there was supposed to be something uh, put in an item that referred to the peace process in certain ways that the uh, Russians and the Americans did not want. Uh, but Afghanistan very much wants uh, China to play a role uh, in the peace process and where they can succeed in that, it will be great. And here, more importantly, very significantly important, it is extremely important for India and China to join hands in, in fighting extremism and terrorism, as both are suffering from it, as is the region suffering from it. So my, my great advocacy today in this trip and in this meeting is India and China joining hands to fight extremism and to work towards peace and stability in this region. The other questions uh, I, will, uh, I will answer uh, very uh, in short words. Our government is durable. It, is, it has a rise in. It has been created out of the prevailing circumstances and political needs of the country so that that government is, is, is important for us and we uh, Afghan people stand behind it fully uh, as far as the U.S. stay beyond 2016 into 2024. The bilateral security agreement is designed for a 10-year um, validity. Uh, on the expiration of the 10-year validity, if it is not renewed, it will go away. And along the way, any party can inform the other of its uh, uh, cancellation uh, by a, a notice giving it a year in advance. I believe that's it is. Well, unfortunately, we're totally out of time. We're totally out of time. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank President Karzai for your brave words, for your candor, for your blunt speak, and of course, all good wishes from India to the people of Afghanistan and Afghanistan. Thank, thank you, you very much. Thank President you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me.